Okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Okay, Sarah, Sarah. When I was just a little boy, I asked my mama, what will I be? Will I be rich? Will I be famous? Here's what she said to me. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. Okay, I want all of you in Zoom land. I know this is kind of weird, but please do this with me. I want y'all to sing the chorus with me, okay? Please, please, even though I can't see you, raise your arms up in the air and let's sway. Que sera, sera, everyone now. Whatever will be, will be. You're great. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I first heard that song when I was uh, 11. My dad took me to see Alfred Hitchcock's The Man Who Knew Too Much. And when I heard, as soon as I heard Doris Day sing that song, it instantly became one of my favorites. And then my dad told me about how that song had helped him through some difficult times. The first being the day that I was born. It was 1969. It was a foggy, cold November Sunday. The entire neighborhood watches the screaming pregnant woman as she tries to squeeze into this little MG midget sports car parked in the middle of Downey Street in the Haight-Ashbury district of San Francisco. Eventually, she's able to squeeze in and she has she leans against the back seat and has her legs sticking out between the front seats um with you know she's straddling the gear shift and that's when i come out with enough force i hit the gear shift knock the car into drive the car moves forward a couple of inches before it hits a brick wall The song Que Sera, Sera plays on the radio as dad takes mom and me to the hospital. And when we get there, mom and I are taken into the hospital and dad stays in the car. The song keeps repeating over and over in his head. And it's the only thing that keeps him seen as he tries to clean the at the afterbirth out of the leather in his boss's car. Anyway, I was instantly famous in my neighborhood. I mean, everybody wanted to know about my well-being, including these five teenagers who came over every day asking, can Malcolm come out to play? Can Malcolm come out to play? And usually my mom's uh, reaction was, no, I'm sorry, he can't, he's sleeping. But once when I was about a year and a half old, I was able to come out to play. And my dad, my dad took a picture of us. There we go. And he shows it to us for, for years later. He shows it around and reminds me how I was the first in our family to do three things. One, I was born and conceived in the same place. Two, 
I was the youngest ever to drive a car. And three, I was the family's first and only gang member. So now here's my parents. The cute, young picture of interracial happiness. They were so young. Now, mama is all about love, at least on the outside. And as long as she's getting what she wants. But as soon as she doesn't, she turns into a combination of Tyler Perry's Medea, The Incredible Hulk, and Lindsay Lohan. He's picture, picture a female Samuel L. Jackson, only not as pretty. Now, my dad, on the other hand, is um, he's a very gentle, loving, um, uh, working man type. He he is like the Dustin Hoffman character in The Graduate, and um, only Mama Mama ain't no Mrs. Robinson, right? She is more like Faye Dunaway's character in Mommy Dearest. Uh, if y'all don't know these references, by the way, uh, the shelter in place has been extended uh, until the end of May. So you get to rent and watch these classics, please. Uh, anyway, I'm three when my parents divorce and my mom takes me and escapes to Hawaii. <clears throat> For, for the next two years, she tries to get full custody in the courts and take me away from my dad. And when I think about it today, I wonder which was the greater motivation, having me live with her or not having me live with my father. Anyway, thankfully, my father never lets go. He's like Rocky Balboa, if Rocky Balboa was a skinny, nonviolent nerd. Um, remember what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> but dad says that that song, Que Sera, Sera, is the only thing that keeps him sane and confident that regardless what happens, Mom is not going to succeed and we'll be together. And he was right because eventually they get joint custody and I spend my school years in Hawaii with my mom and my new stepdad. And I spend my summers and an occasional Christmas here in San Francisco with my dad. I'm seven when I star in my first play. It's a play called Torco de Terrawall. I play Martin, who's an outcast at school, a constant target for all the bullies. His only friend is his stuffed monster doll named Torco. And no matter what happens at school that day, Martin always feels nice snuggling next to Torco's warm, fuzzy body. But then one day, Torco the Terrible comes to life. And everybody's scared except Martin because eventually Martin tells everybody that even though Torco does look like a vicious monster, he's nothing but a nice, furry, gentle friend. My mom is so proud that I'm in that play because she figures that I'm following in her footsteps. See, she is a wannabe actress and she forces my brothers and I to watch her do her monologues. Her favorite monologue is Samuel L. Jackson's hitman scene from Pulp Fiction. One winter in 1979, my mother, I'm, I'm nine years old at this time. Um, my mother takes me and my neighborhood friends, Kaino and Celeste, 
to a day in the snow, um, which means she takes us to the top of Mauna Kea. That day was so much fun because we, we had snow fights, we played hide and seek, we had races on sleds. It was, it was such a wonderful and exhausting day. The next day, I woke up with a headache, and my mom gives me an aspirin substitute. The next thing I know, my parents are rushing me to the Honoka Hospital, uh, but the doctor there is out, so now they have to rush me another 15 miles away to the next hospital. And the doctors there elevate my case to the larger hospital in Hilo, so I'm slammed into an ambulance, drove all the way to Hilo, and by the time I get to Hilo, I'm in a coma. And then 24 hours later, out of the blue, I wake up. This has been a, a excerpt of part one of the four part series. Thank you very much.